and that class is why you should never, ever mix Zolofian stomach acid with Krellian moon dust, Professor Zilrax concluded, his tentacles waving dramatically as he gestured to the small, gently smoking crater on his desk. A chorus of impressed clicks and whistles filled the classroom as the alien students marveled at the aftermath of the chemical reaction. Well, all except for one. Seriously? That's it came a distinctly unimpressed voice from the back of the room. I've seen more exciting things happen in a lava lamp. All eyes, stalks and various sensory appendages turned to face the source of the comment. Sitting there, legs propped up on the desk and arms crossed, was the class's sole human student, Dave Henderson. Professor Zilrax's chromatophores flashed a mix of annoyance and curiosity. Mr. Henderson, perhaps you'd care to elaborate on your disappointment. Dave shrugged, a gesture that never failed to fascinate his alien classmates. I mean, don't get me wrong, Prof. The whole mix two space ingredients and make a teeny tiny boom thing is cute and all, but where's the pizzas? The danger? The holy crap, I think I just singed off my eyebrows factor. The professor's eye stalks twitched in what the class had come to recognize as his equivalent of an eye roll. Mr. Henderson, need I remind you that this is an introductory xenochemistry class, not a, what do you humans call it? A Mythbusters episode. A ripple of confused murmurs spread through the class. One brave Valaxian student raised a tentacle. Professor, what's a Mythbusters? Dave grinned, leaning forward. Only the greatest scientific show in the history of Earth. They blew stuff up, tested urban legends, and made science cool. You guys are seriously missing out. Professor Zilrax clicked his mandibles in exasperation. Yes, well, as fascinating as that sounds, Mr. Henderson, we are here to learn the fundamentals of interspecies chemical interactions, not to blow stuff up. But Prof. Dave argued, his eyes gleaming with mischief, isn't the best way to learn about chemical interactions to see them in action, on a grand scale. The alien students watched this exchange with a mix of confusion and intrigue. To them, the idea of deliberately causing large, potentially dangerous reactions seemed utterly bizarre. Their educational system had always emphasized caution and precision, with carefully controlled micro-experiments designed to minimize risk. Glicks, a gelatinous blob of a student with ice dogs poking out in all directions, oozed forward in his seat. Dave, he gurgled. Are you suggesting we perform unsafe experiments? Dave's grin widened. Not unsafe, my gooey friend. Just more enthusiastic. Come on, who here hasn't secretly wanted to see what happens when you really push these reactions to the limit? A reluctant wave of interested chirps and whistles filled the room. Even Professor Zilrax's chromatophores betrayed a hint of curiosity beneath his exasperation. Mr. Henderson, the professor said slowly, while I appreciate your enthusiasm for the subject, I must insist that we adhere to the approved curriculum. We simply don't have the facilities or the safety measures in place for the kind of experiments you're suggesting. Dave leaned back in his chair, a glint in his eye that his classmates had learned to both fear and anticipate. What if I told you we could do it safely, with minimal risk, and teach everyone a valuable lesson about chemical reactions and safety protocols at the same time? Professor Zilrax's eye stalks narrowed suspiciously. I'm listening, but I want to make it clear that if this involves anything illegal, dangerous, or likely to get me fired, the answer is an unequivocal no. Fair enough, Dave nodded. How about this we take the experiment off campus, to a controlled environment? I know a place that's perfect an old quarry just outside the city limits. We scale up the reaction, but with proper safety measures in place, it'll be educational, exciting, and most importantly, safe. The class buzzed with excitement. The idea of an off-campus experiment was unheard of in their rigidly structured educational system. Zilrax's chromatophores cycled through a range of colors as he considered the proposal, and how, exactly, do you propose to ensure everyone's safety, Mr. Henderson? Dave's smile was positively radiant. I'm glad you asked, Prof. I've got some friends in the Terran Embassy Science Division. They owe me a favor or two, and I bet they'd be more than happy to lend us some equipment and oversee the experiment. Plus, it'd be a great opportunity for some interspecies scientific collaboration, right? The professor's eye stalks swiveled as he glanced around the classroom, taking in the eager faces and other appendages of his students. He let out a long, whistling sigh. I can't believe I'm even considering this, but... Very well, Mr. Henderson. If and I stress, if you can arrange proper safety measures and get approval from the school board, we'll consider your 
expanded experiment. The classroom erupted in a cacophony of excited alien noises. Dave pumped his fist in victory, a gesture that sent a nearby arachnoid student scuttling backward in surprise. You won't regret this, Prof. Dave exclaimed. I'll get right on it. This is going to be the best Cena chemistry class ever. As the bell rang, or rather, as the psychic resonance field signaling the end of class pulsed through the room, the students filed out, chattering excitedly about the prospect of Dave's experiment. Professor Zirak slumped in his hover chair, his tentacles massaging his cranial ridge. What have I gotten myself into? He muttered. Little did he know, the adventure was just beginning. Two weeks later, a motley convoy of hover buses and anti-grav trucks wound its way through the outskirts of New Atlantis, the gleaming capital of Earth's first extrasolar colony. In the lead vehicle, Dave sat next to a visibly nervous Professor Zirax, practically bouncing in his seat with excitement. I still can't believe you pulled this off, Zilrax muttered, his eye stalk swiveling to take in the barren landscape outside. When the school board actually approved this field trip, I was convinced they'd all gone mad. Dave grinned. Never underestimate the power of a well-crafted presentation, Prof. Plus, I think they were impressed by the safety measures we've put in place. Speaking of which, how are you liking your new suit? Zilrax glanced down at the specially designed protective gear encasing his amorphous body. It was a marvel of human and alien engineering, capable of withstanding extreme temperatures, pressures, and a wide range of chemical reactions. It's surprisingly comfortable, he admitted, though I still feel ridiculous. Oh, come on, Dave chuckled. You look like a badass space marine. The students are going to love it. As if on cue, excited chatter erupted from the back of the hover bus. The alien students were all decked out in similar protective gear, each suit modified to accommodate their unique physiologies. They looked like a group of mismatched astronauts heading for some bizarre space mission. Glix, the gelatinous student, oozed up to the front of the bus, his protective suit somehow containing his fluid form. Dave, he burbled, I must confess, I'm experiencing a mix of excitement and terror. Is this normal for human scientific endeavors? Dave laughed. Glix, my blobby buddy, that's the perfect mindset for what we're about to do. A little fear keeps you sharp, but the excitement, that's what makes science fun. Professor Zirax's chromatophores flashed a warning yellow. Let's not forget, Mr. Henderson, that this is still an educational exercise. We're here to learn, not just to. What's that human phrase? Blow things up. Of course, Prof. Dave nodded solemnly, though the twinkle in his eye betrayed his enthusiasm. Education is our top priority. The explosions are just a bonus. Before Zirax could retort, the convoy came to a stop. They had arrived at the quarry, a vast, bowl-shaped depression carved into the alien landscape. At the bottom, a team of humans in similar protective gear was bustling around an array of equipment that looked like a cross between a chemistry lab and a movie special effects setup. As the students disembarked, ooing and ayahing at the sight, Dave turned to the professor. Ready to make history, Prof. Xerox's eye stalks drooped slightly. I'm ready to survive this ordeal with my tenure intact, he muttered. The next hour was a flurry of activity as Dave, with help from his friends at the Terran Embassy, set up the experiment. The alien students watched in fascination as massive vats of chemicals were carefully positioned, sensors were calibrated, and safety perimeters were established. Finally, everything was ready. The class gathered at a safe distance, protected not only by their suits but also by a shimmering force field. Dave stood at a control panel, looking for all the world like a mad scientist about to bring his creation to life. All right, everyone, he called out, his voice crackling through their suit communicators. What we're about to witness is the xylophian stomach acid and Krellian moon dust reaction, but on a scale never before attempted. Are you ready to see some real Zinner chemistry in action? A chorus of excited alien noises answered him. Even Professor Zilrax, despite his apprehension, found himself leaning forward in anticipation. Dave's fingers danced over the control panel. In three, two, one, science. With a dramatic flourish, he hit the final button. For a moment, nothing happened. Then, with a sound like a thousand angry stomachs gurgling in unison, the vats began to churn. The reaction started slowly at first, a gentle bubbling that quickly grew into a roiling boil. Multicolored foam spewed from the vats, hissing and steaming as it hit the air. 
the ground began to tremble. Uh, Dave Glix burbled nervously. Is it supposed to do that? Before Dave could answer, a geyser of iridescent liquid shot into the air, easily a hundred feet high. It sparkled in the alien sunlight, refracting into a dazzling array of colors. Holy Zorblak's Professor Zilrax whispered, his eye stalks wide with awe. The chemical fountain continued to rise, defying gravity in a way that seemed to bend the laws of physics. Then, just as it reached its apex, something unexpected happened. The liquid began to crystallize in midair, forming intricate, fractal patterns that hung suspended above the quarry. It was as if a galaxy of multicolored snowflakes had suddenly materialized. Dave, one of the Terran scientists, called out, her voice tight with concern. We're getting some weird readings here. The reaction's not stabilizing like it should. Dave's brow furrowed as he studied the readouts on his control panel. Ha, ah, that's odd. The xylophian acid's pH is fluctuating wildly, and the moon dust seems to be. Wait, is it replicating? Before anyone could process this information, the crystalline structures above began to pulse with an inner light. They spun faster and faster, merging and separating in a hypnotic dance. Its beautiful breathed Zyrella, a bioluminescent squid-like student whose tentacles were pressed against her faceplate in wonder. Its trouble is what it is muttered Professor Zilrax, his chromatophores flashing warning colors. Suddenly the crystals emitted a high-pitched whine that cut through even the insulation of their protective suits. The alien students recoiled, their various sensory organs overwhelmed by the assault. Dave Professor Zilrax shouted over the noise, I think it's time to shut this experiment down. Dave nodded, his fingers flying over the control panel. Working on it, Prof. But the system's not responding. It's like the reaction has taken on a life of its own. As if in response to his words, the crystalline structures began to descend, swirling around the quarry like a tornado of alien gemstones. Where they touched the ground, more crystals sprouted, growing at an alarming rate. Fascinating murmured Zix 427, a robotic exchange student whose optical sensors were recording everything. The chemical reaction appears to be terraforming the environment to suit its own propagation. Less fascinating, more terrifying yelped Glix, who had somehow managed to compress himself into a quivering ball inside his protective suit. Dave's mind raced as he tried to think of a solution. This was way beyond anything he had anticipated. The reaction wasn't just bigger, it was fundamentally different from anything they had seen in the classroom. Okay, everyone, stay calm, he called out, trying to project confidence he didn't entirely feel. We prepared for unexpected outcomes. Remember your emergency protocols. The class huddled together, watching in a mix of awe and fear as the crystal storm continued to grow. The Terran scientists were scrambling, deploying containment fields and taking readings, but it was clear they were out of their depth. Professor Zilrax slithered up to Dave, his tentacles writhing with anxiety. Mr. Henderson, I hope you have a plan to contain this situation, because if not, I fear we may have just initiated a xenochemical apocalypse. Dave took a deep breath, his mind racing through possible solutions. Then, his eyes lit up with that familiar gleam of inspiration that his classmates had come to both admire and fear. Prof, he said slowly, a grin spreading across his face, I think I know how to stop this. But you're probably not going to like it. Zilrax's eye stalks drooped. Why do I have a feeling I'm going to regret asking this, but what's your plan? Dave's grin widened. We fight chemistry with chemistry. On an even bigger scale. Before the professor could protest, Dave was already in motion, barking orders to the Terran scientists and pulling up schematics on his suit's holographic display. Listen up, everyone, he shouted, his voice carrying across the quarry. We're going to create a counter-reaction to neutralize this crystal storm. I need every bit of chemical knowledge you've got. Shirella, what's the most reactive substance from your homeworld? The bioluminescent alien blinked in surprise. Uh, probably lumina extract. It's so unstable we use it to power our starships. Dave nodded enthusiastically. Perfect. Zix 427, what's the melting point of your planet's core? With the robot's processor's word. Approximately 15,000 degrees Celsius, but I fail to see how that's relev. Trust me. It is Dave interrupted. Glix, buddy, I hate to ask this, but how fast can you produce that digestive enzyme of yours? 
the one that accidentally dissolved half the chemistry lab last month. Glix gurgled nervously. Pretty quickly. But Dave, are you sure about this? Nope, Dave replied cheerfully. But that's never stopped humanity before, and it's not going to stop us now. For the next frantic hour, the quarry became a hive of activity. Under Dave's direction, the class worked together in ways they never had before. Alien biochemistries were combined with Terran technology, creating a con concoction that defied conventional scientific understanding. All the while, the crystal storm grew, threatening to overflow the quarry and spread across the planet. The local authorities had been alerted, and evacuation warnings were being broadcast across New Atlantis. Finally, as the sun began to set, casting an eerie glow through the swirling crystals, Dave stood before a hastily constructed device that looked like a cross between a particle accelerator and a smoothie maker. All right, everyone, he called out, his voice tight with a mix of excitement and nerves. All right, everyone, Dave called out, his voice tight with a mix of excitement and nerves. This is it. Our last chance to stop this thing before it gets completely out of hand. Are you ready to make xenochemistry history? A chorus of nervous but determined alien sounds answered him. Even Professor Zilrax, who had been in a state of near-constant panic for the past hour, straightened his eye stalks and gave a determined click of his mandibles. Mr. Henderson. The professor said, his chromatophores flashing a mix of fear and grudging respect, while I still maintain that this entire situation is a result of your reckless disregard for proper scientific protocols. I must admit, your ability to improvise under pressure is rather impressive. Dave grinned. Thanks, Prof. I'll take that as a ringing endorsement. Now, let's save the planet. With a theatrical flourish, Dave activated the cobbled together device. For a moment, nothing happened. Then, with a sound like a thousand tin cans being crushed simultaneously, the machine sprang to life. A beam of swirling, multicolored energy shot from the device, cutting through the crystal storm like a hot knife through butter. Where it touched the alien formations, they began to dissolve, breaking down into harmless particles that rained down on the quarry floor. It's working, Zarella exclaimed, her tentacles waving excitedly. Indeed, the crystal storm was receding, shrinking back towards its point of origin. But just as victory seemed within reach, the unexpected happened once again. The remaining crystals, as if sensing their impending doom, began to pulse with a new intensity. They started to merge, forming larger and larger structures that twisted into impossible shapes. Uh, Dave Glicks burbled nervously. I don't think they're supposed to do that. Dave's eyes widened as he watched the readouts on his control panel. The crystals are adapting. They're combining their molecular structures to resist the counter-reaction. Professor Zilrax's eye stalks drooped in despair. So this is how it ends, consumed by a runaway chemistry experiment on a backwater colony world. My tenure committee is going to have a field day with this. But Dave wasn't ready to give up. His mind raced, processing everything he'd learned about xenochemistry, everything he knew about the alien substances they'd combined, and every crazy idea he'd ever had while watching late-night science fiction marathons. Wait a second, he muttered his eyes lighting up with that dangerous gleam of inspiration. What if we... No, that's crazy. But then again... Without warning, Dave sprinted towards the edge of the safety perimeter, ignoring the shouts of alarm from his classmates and the Terran scientists. Dave, what are you doing? Professor Zilrax cried out, his tentacles writhing in panic. Something incredibly stupid or incredibly brilliant Dave called back. Probably both. Before anyone could stop him, Dave had reached the control panel of their original experiment setup. His fingers flew over the keys, inputting a series of commands that made absolutely no sense to anyone watching. Come on. Come on, he muttered, glancing nervously at the approaching wall of crystals. Suddenly, the ground began to rumble. The vats that had started this whole mess began to glow with an inner light, pulsing in rhythm with Dave's rapid-fire keystrokes. Everyone, brace yourselves, Dave shouted slamming his hand down on a big red button that definitely hadn't been there an hour ago. For a split second, everything went quiet. Then, with a roar that shook the very foundations of the quarry, the vats exploded in a dazzling display of chemical chaos. A wave of energy rippled outwards, colliding with the advancing crystal formation. Where they met, reality itself seemed to warp and bend. The crystals twisted, folded in on themselves, and then, 
With a sound like shattering glass multiplied by a million, they simply disappeared. The class watched in stunned silence as the last of the alien formations vanished, leaving behind nothing but a faintly glowing residue on the quarry floor. For a long moment, no one moved. Then, tentatively, Glicks oozed forward. Is. Is it over? Dave, looking slightly singed but enormously pleased with himself, nodded. Yeah, buddy. I think it is. As if a spell had been broken, the quarry erupted in a cacophony of alien cheers, whistles, and assorted celebratory noises. Students who had been cowering in fear moments ago were now bouncing, floating, or oozing with joy. Professor Zilrak slithered up to Dave, his chromatophores cycling through a range of colors that suggested he was experiencing every possible emotion simultaneously. Mr. Henderson, he began, his voice quivering slightly. Would you care to explain exactly what you just did? Dave's grin was positively radiant. Well, Prof, it's quite simple, really. I realized that the crystals were adapting to our counter-reaction by combining their molecular structures. So, I figured, why not give them more to adapt to? I recalibrated our original experiment to produce an even more complex reaction, creating a sort of chemical overload. When that wave hit the crystals, they couldn't adapt fast enough Professor Zirax finished, his eye stalks widening in understanding. The competing reactions caused them to break down at a molecular level. Exactly, Dave nodded enthusiastically. It was like giving them a chemical lobotomy. They just couldn't handle the input and poof, problem solved. The professor was silent for a long moment, his tentacles twitching thoughtfully. Finally, he spoke. Mr. Henderson, in all my years of teaching, I have never encountered a student quite like you. Your methods are unorthodox, dangerous, and frankly terrifying. Dave's grin faltered slightly. But, but, Xerax continued, his chromatophores settling into a grudgingly admiring blue, I cannot deny the results. You've demonstrated a level of intuitive understanding of xenochemistry that is, well, unprecedented. Your quick thinking may have just saved not only this class but potentially this entire colony. Dave's grin returned full force. So, does this mean I pass the course? Before the professor could answer, they were interrupted by the arrival of a fleet of official-looking vehicles, representatives from the colonial government, the Terran embassy, and what appeared to be every scientific institution on the planet were pouring into the quarry, all clamoring for explanations. As the chaos of debriefings, readings, and impromptu press conferences swirled around them, the alien students gathered near Dave, their protective suits covered in glowing residue, but their faces, or equivalent sensory organs, beaming with excitement. Dave Zurella chirped, her tentacles waving animatedly. That was the most terrifying and exhilarating experience of my life. Is this what all human science classes are like? Dave laughed. Not usually, no. But maybe they should be, right, Prof? Professor Zilrax, who was in the middle of explaining the situation to a very confused and slightly singed colonial official, shot Dave a look that somehow managed to convey both exasperation and amusement. Perhaps the professor said dryly, we should save the discussion of curriculum changes for after we've finished explaining to the authorities why we nearly turned their colony into a giant alien snow globe. As the sun set over the quarry, casting a warm glow over the aftermath of their impromptu Save the World experiment, Dave couldn't help but feel a sense of pride. Sure, things had gotten a little out of hand, but in the end, they'd not only learned some valuable lessons about xenochemistry, but also about teamwork, quick thinking, and the importance of always having a big red button handy. Plus, he was pretty sure he'd just guaranteed himself an A for the semester. Not bad for a day's work in xenochemistry class. Epilogue. In the weeks that followed, the quarry incident, as it came to be known, became something of a legend on campus. Students whispered about it in the hallways, and more than a few alien parents called the school to inquire about transferring their children into Professor Zirax's suddenly very popular xenochemistry course. Dave found himself the center of attention, bombarded with questions from curious classmates and job offers from several interstellar research institutions. He politely declined the latter, insisting that he still had a lot to learn, though he did cheekily suggest that they might want to update their safety protocols. Professor Zilrax, much to everyone's surprise, didn't retire on the spot or suffer a complete nervous breakdown. Instead, he threw himself into studying the data from their experiment with an enthusiasm that shocked his colleagues. 
he was often heard muttering about revolutionary implications and paradigm shifts in xenochemical theory. The colonial government, after much debate and several very long meetings, decided to commemorate the event by establishing the Henderson Zilrak Center for Extreme Xenochemistry in the now famous quarry. Dave was invited to cut the ribbon at the opening ceremony, which he did with his trademark grin and a pair of comically oversized safety scissors. As for the xenochemistry class, well, let's just say that enrollment numbers skyrocketed the following semester. Students from all over the galaxy signed up, eager to experience the legendary Henderson method of hands-on learning. And if the occasional explosion or bout of spontaneous crystal growth erupted from the science building, well, that was just par for the course in the brave new world of extreme xenochemistry education. In the end, what had started as a simple attempt to liven up a boring experiment had turned into a transformative event for the entire scientific community of New Atlantis. It just went to show that sometimes, the most important discoveries happen when you're not afraid to think big, take risks, and maybe, just maybe, blow a few things up along the way. After all, isn't that what science is all about?